Yeah, this conference will work. now be recorded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we missed all the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're at unfinished business here. And um, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way here. What we want to talk about is a little bit of where we're at with Minnesota Square. Yeah. Um, uh, Scott has done some major work uh, related to not only laying out the plaza, but also getting the updates related to um, our Mason's donation that we touched on last week. And so um, right now, if you are looking at, can everybody see the screen as far as Minnesota Square on there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Uh, so where we're at right now, this is College Avenue that goes right up to Gustavus. Um, we have done several things here. Um, the Masons have uh, come through with $50,000 for um, the Masons um, shelter. And so at the council meeting on next Monday, we will be going before the city council to accept the donation. Uh, that donation will cover um, a secondary facility that will be located about right here. And you should have that in your packet as well. Um, city will be participating. We have right now about a $62,000 project lined up um, with the city's uh, supplying everything over $50,000 as in-kind labor. So what we'll do is we'll dig some of the footings. Um, we'll provide the electrical to that site and water. And we'll evaluate lighting on what we see as a need there. We may use solar. We may use a plug-in. There'll be some receptacles in that area uh, for that, that area. Um, the Masons uh, hope to be able to move some money around and deliver the cash roughly around the 1st of April. So we're really excited about how that would go. Um, we've laid out with our city engineer, the area that you are seeing in blue is where we're at with uh, money that we have allocated from um, our budget. And right now that's looking at about $140,000, uh, give or take. Um, Actually, it's going to be about 156,000 right now is where we're sitting. So we've got to come up with some in kind. So we're looking at ways to trim that back. So cash out of pocket is only 140. And so we're we're getting real close on how that can be uh, um, delivered. And we're still looking at ways to improve, but we feel really comfortable about going forward with our activities from that point. Um, we are still in the application process for um, outdoor grant process. That is the area in pink here that you're seeing. I'm sorry, that's the area in yellow that you are seeing off of this facility. And so we've identified a connecting sidewalk roughly from the existing playground past the Masons area that you're seeing here. Um, having two landing spots, one by the restroom, one just to the southwest of the Vets Memorial process. Um, these trails here would then connect with some of our sidewalks. And then we are looking at a parking area off of Elm Street. Uh, right now, uh, if that is uh, acceptable, we'd be matching grants of about $121,000 for that process. If the grant is not successful, uh, those improvements would not be done. And so we're sitting there, uh, Angie and Scott have been working very diligently with, with the uh, grant application people. Uh, they've been very generous with St. Peter in the long haul. And so really what happens with this type of layout, if this grant is successful, it will really define how the pavilion is used in the future. Um, how we bring the community to this facility and how they navigate uh, through the entire park during community events. Um, we're really excited about the Mason stepping forward. That helps us in a variety of ways. Um, and then the linking sidewalks just really set the tone for 
future um, playground improvements and some green space improvements off to the southwest there. Um, if everything goes well, it could be a very, very busy summer down there. Uh, nonetheless, we're going to see some improvements. As you guys are aware, I'll just review this for Haley and Rochelle's um, information as we're looking at a couple of planters in the uh, plaza area, at least in the first phase. Uh, we continue to solicit uh, donations from uh, different companies and organizations uh, that won't impact other financial obligations throughout the city. Uh, but the overall goal is we're comfortable doing this in a step process. Um, we do plan to lay out the entire, even though we don't have funding for the second phase of the plaza, we're gonna come in and do the earthwork this year with city staff. And so we're gonna tear out um, some of the unevenness throughout this area. Uh, as you can see, it uh, may look like we're unfinished for about a year, but our overall goal is we wanna have something that will represent what we wanna do in the long run. This plaza will serve twofold. Um, during the week, um, food vendors can set up here. There'll be at least four plugins here in that first phase where food vendors could set up if we ever get back to normal, uh, where the community can come and have a lunch on a June day. Uh, but it's also gonna provide access uh, with removable bollards in the, or adjacent to College Avenue uh, that would provide access up to um, the pavilion. Uh, then you'd have some parking again on the, uh, on the uh, south side of the uh, pavilion in the grassy area. So we have to do some dirt work again through here. So uh, we, we're gonna try to work around a lot of the community events. Uh, but our goal is, is if everything pops, as we hope it does, uh, we could have a great May and an early June that's just full of construction. Uh, and this doesn't even include all the events that Joey's got scheduled there and the activities that are going to go on there. So we'd like to get back to chaos as normal for a lot of these events and just have uh, the community have a place to go and, and to enjoy how about questions that you may have of Joey or I that we can try to answer? Oh, what would the footprint of that um, donated uh, shelter be? Um, do I have one of those in there, Ange, or is that it not in there? in there? But I don't know. I'll look and see if I've got one close here. The, it's uh, 22 foot across, so it's it's a pretty decent size. It's real similar in size to the to the um, to the shelter at Gorman Park. Okay. So if you look at how that is, that Gorman Park has just a little larger footprint, but it'd be real similar. All right. So you'd be looking at metal pole, uh, metal um, um, structure with a metal roof. Yeah. You said you're going to work on the. Uh, surface of the second phase yes oh. yes we'll, we'll do, uh, as much of the dirt work that we can in there and then we'll take so the concrete the as far as we can go yeah what would the surface be in the interim gravel all right yeah it'll be gravel it'll be to a basically a pad elevation and then we would uh, pour concrete on top of that if we get to that point okay So you mentioned like is the are the masons paying for the electrical being run to that location or is that the city um that's kind of we're looking to see what their their uh donation will cover so okay. they have 50 they have fifty thousand dollars as a total package and so we've looked at a variety of different options we put together really a a vision for them and said here's what can be done they went back, uh, they initially talked to us about $50,000. Um, they don't have an additional $12,000, but what we have is in-kind labor. So if we can make the pad out there uh, nice and smooth, get the uh, footings put in for them, you know, with our electrical, we can put those on, on a uh, round footing. So what we'll do is drill the holes for those and create the, the footings for that. We can get the structure pulled together and then we do some of our labor to assemble 
um, the structure within the park. So a lot of ours would be in-kind labor. So it'd be city labor from that point of view to put the information up there. So the pad for the um, shelter is going to be concrete? Yes. Okay. We'd like to pour that with, hopefully the grant comes in because we want to match those elevations up. So everything kind of flows in that area. So is solar, so ultimately you propose like solar and plug in and they'll decide is solar more expensive, less expensive to put in? Yeah, the, the solar lighting would just be um, something that we would use for, um, you know, when it gets close to dark at 10 o'clock, the park still closes at 10. So what we're going to do is put solar lighting in to see if we could get by cheaper. We are going to have electrical outlets available. So if Rock Bend comes in and has uh, puts a tarp up uh, between the post and have a um, show on the other side, they've always had a second tent there. And so they'd have another little stage that they could perform off of. And then they'd have a spot behind that for their presenters to get prepared. Um, for, for the concert or whatever it would be. Uh, Masons are all for that. So um, we'll, we'll probably talk with the Rock Bend people and with the Blues Fest people to see if they're interested in participating. Um, right now, the main goal is to get the Masons on board, get the material ordered so that we can build something and get things going. And we'll solicit them for some additional funding. So uh, I was reading that the grant is due in March. Do, is there a um, is there a timeline established for when we'll know if we receive that DNR grant or, or not? Yeah, we should know by June. Okay. Um, usually it's early June. So uh, our goals are is that usually in the park there we have a, an event around the 15th of June. The Blues Fest comes in. Ambassadors sponsor that. Uh, that would be a about a perfect time to know some of those activities. Uh, whether or not they're successful. Uh, we'll probably be working in the park sometime in May, mid-May. Ground gets hard enough where we can go in there and do some activities and, and get that laid out. I know in our, like the resolution that's typed up, we um, the Masons get to put a sign that acknowledges that it's theirs. Do we have any guidelines that we need to give them for like what size sign or what that is to look like? We'll, we'll work with them and talk about uh, what we have up there. Now, whether it's a sign or an emblem, um, yeah. we'd like to have, uh, if you know how the uh, metal supports at the pavilion have the nice little um, metallic brackets on them, yep. we're looking at doing something off one of those brackets, maybe in the old fashioned way, so it looks like it's part of, part of the structure. We're a little worried about vandalism because they're not really that solid. Um, on the pavilion, they're welded on there, so those aren't going that way. And what we case, um, we're looking for a little better fit before we decide that. But they've got a variety of small emblems, yep. uh, similar to what you see at the Lions facilities that are down at Veterans Park. Yep. And so we want it to be of high class. Um, that represents their organization well. Uh, the one caveat that does come with the donation is they want it reserved for them for the 4th of July. Uh, they have a, they participate in the 4th of July parade. They bring um, masons from all over the county, uh, um, several county area to have a um, lunch at Minnesota Square every year. And so they would they would like that reserve for them on the 4th of July. So Joey will be down there with a ski pole protecting that so they can get in there. Yep. Yeah, and then, then and then the goal would be is that that option is available for rental outside of that. And then based on where it's placed, if you just start to think of some of the uses, I mean, I see families probably down there having lunch or whatever and then their kids are playing on the playground or just a variety of people you have an extra shaded area with a few picnic tables under so a lot of options with this um, for more than just the fourth of july and our bigger events
Any other discussion? Um, I'm interested to know what kind of events you were talking about putting in uh, the park. Uh, for this summer, Eli? Yeah. So you're, you're going to see this summer, uh, uh, if you remember last summer, we did start the, a jazz series with uh, the Art Center. We're partnered with them. That okay. jazz series will be back again. So there's going to be, there's four concert dates booked already. Um, you're going to see some publication from them on there. It starts later in the summer. I, I think it's two July dates and two August dates, if I remember right. Um, outside of that, you know, we want a summer where we're going to see this uh, pavilion rented more, you know, now that we're a year into COVID, basically. Uh, we did see a lot of use last year, but we didn't see a lot of our normal rentals like we like we'd have because it, you know we had restrictions on group size and things like that um so people are coming in and renting there's weddings booked already and and they're meeting those with the restrictions in place by mdh and and we'll see what those are by the summer but but right now there's there's four concerts booked and then then a lot of private rentals at this time okay thanks Sounding like our discussion is kind of coming to a close. We need to make a motion to approve um, the Mason donation along with the shelter. Does anyone have a motion? I'll make that. Brian Primo made the motion here in the public works. Okay. Second. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We will work with the uh, city council next Monday night to get the donation started. And then I will bring you guys back some design criteria for discussion. And uh, hopefully we can get things set in motion. Sounds good. Moving on to the 2022 parks improvement plan. Yes, um, as you guys are aware, we have modified this for your benefit. So for our new members information, um, let me give you a little background here and Joey, help me out if there's any questions. But what we do is for a five year window, uh, we were tasked with identifying areas where we can make improvements to uh, city parks. Uh, the parks board back in 2019 broke that down into playground equipment, which is P&E at the top of your screen, parking trails and sidewalks, which is what we're working on this year in 2021. Uh, for 2022, we identified shade structures as the area that we we're going to work on. 2023, we worked on sports activities. So we identified the priorities. And in 2024, uh, structures and pool. And so what we're trying to do this year, since it's 2021, is work in the year ahead. As you can kind of see, this area that's designated for improvements in 2022, we were trying to get this prioritized and um, work on those activities with the $100,000 that we have from the city council allocation plus $40,000 from our parks budget. And so we've revised this about you know, three times probably. And what we're looking for is for any additional discussion that you guys may have and really uh, uh, be okay from you guys to start making plans in these areas uh, going forward. So one of the things, um, if you've had time to look at this, here's some things that happen. And of course, we don't always drive the entire ship of city government. As you guys are aware, um, the restroom facilities the, uh, in Community Spirit Park at 156,000, that is set to be bid, uh, receive bids here within the next couple of weeks. Actually, it's this week, it's Thursday. We will have the bids in for Community Spirit Park. Um, 
which will get accomplished in 2021. We also have identified um, the priorities going forward as working with Hallett's nature area. And of course, uh, we do not have the land availability for that. Uh, right now, we did have a couple of developers on the hook. Uh, we thought we'd be working with them by now to make this happen. That has not happened. And so really what we're looking at is doing items uh, two through five that are highlighted there, um, as you see a breakdown here going forward. So we have roughly $144,000 um, identified for that and open for discussion. So you're talking about the shade structures, right? Correct. All right. So the areas that we had officially talked about were um, item two is uh, shade structure within Galt Park, uh, picnic area, I'm sorry, uh, picnic area with shade structure in Galt Park, uh, Warren Park, Stones Park, and Prairie Ridge. So if that is still your priority, we're open for discussion or questions. So uh, just just for my own clarity, the everything with the Hallett's nature area it just is kind of in a, a standstill because of because of the problem with the land acquisition. Is that is that correct? Right. Okay. That's correct. We would love to have a half acre to an acre down there, Rochelle, to expand to the, what I would call the south of Hallett's Pond. So um, we do not have that. So um, that's probably put a hold on a lot of the development on that south end at this time. Doesn't mean we can't budget for it in the future or try to do something in the future with that. And if things develop, we'll do some of the smaller items um, probably right away. Okay, thank you. What's our budget for this year? Just looking at the totals of those things. Um, this year it's 140,000 that's going into Minnesota Square. It'll be the same for next year. Thank you. The only thing I would have a question on is, is between Prairie Ridge's shade structure and Ramsey Park, off the list, which park would have more use for that right now? Because Prairie Ridge is pretty new and it isn't used very much yet. Right. So right. Would Ramsey be a little more appropriate for that being that's in the middle of town? Sure. Brian's question is um, Prairie Ridge is listed as the last one there. Is Ramsey Park a better fit based on the uses that are currently there? And we do receive quite a few calls for Prairie Ridge improvements, oh. believe it or not, with houses out there. Yeah, I know it's hard to come. Yep. Yep, that's, that's certainly a, a good topic of discussion. We also have the development um, on Nicollet Avenue that could be served by Prairie Ridge, right? Yes. How many families is that development going to serve? Is, is your question um, how many people? Yeah, well, a new development on Nicollet Avenue. Yep. How many units? That, that's 66 units, and they are talking about um, having occupancy there by October 1st, and then they are looking at this fall, flipping that over and putting another 66 on the other side. So that population in that area is going to grow. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Now the pathway on the map that we looked at, we had. There's a map in the uh, packet showing a trail 
Mm -hmm. Going to Clark Street from the current development? Correct. Is that already budgeted for? Uh, that is a ship grant. Uh, if you go down to page 10, And that's yeah, you're talking the trail along where the benches are going, yeah, Mr. Beidelman, or are you talking um, Clark Street that's yeah. right here? Clark Street. Yeah, that will be developed at least 500 feet to the west, about where the C is. That that housing subdivision is going right where that green trees used to be. Right. And then they have an area that's right over here that'll be tied in, and we will then uh, put the street down. Now, Cullen Street may in the future become uh, a through street, but that's probably a couple years down the road before we get to the Cullen Street. Uh, so this is, trail. It would be linkable by trail. Um, the apartment complex that's located up by the trees here does right. have a connection to the trail, and they could walk down here to use that park. Right. And there's plenty of benches for them to rest in the future if they do want to use that. Regarding the mill pond, who, I mean, it's fit, there's fish in there, right? Do yes. we stock it? Does DNR stock it? How does that work? Um, they will if we request it. Okay. So is that, Current fishing pier out there usable? Is it? Uh, it's got some ice thieves. It's been it's been pretty beat up, but I believe that is on uh, somebody's docket to be fixed. I don't know if it's this year or next year, but I remember seeing it. It's on the other page. Yeah. Upgrade fishing pier. Yeah. So you're talking. Um, uh, we'd probably have to budget for it, or, or that could be a priority too if we wanted to try to um, do some DNR grants, maybe to upgrade that. That that would el be eligible. Yeah, I wondered if you could apply for something that would be the fishing activities. Certainly. So, do we need a motion for our priorities for 2022? Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you give us that direction, that that's how it'll work. I would move that we I'll go with uh, two through five for okay. 2022. The shade structures in those particular parks. Okay. Those four parks. Can we add in there to look at the, um, the fishing pier coming from a, a DNR grant for that? Sure. Try to pull that out of there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that included in the motion? Sure. Do we have a second for our motion? I second that. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion Thank you. Passed. We'll get working on that and report back to you guys and let you know how we're uh, we're working through that. Okay, ship grant for the benches. Yeah, we kind of covered it a little bit. Uh, I don't know. If... And so, as you guys are aware, um, we applied for a grant for benches and concrete landings in a variety of places along some of our trails out here. We're seeing a lot of activity walking from the Windsor Pond subdivision here, um, uh, both in the town on the other trail systems along Sunrise Drive out here on County Road 20. Um, and so with that, we looked at some benches and resting areas with concrete along those facilities. They're highlighted in red here. We were successful in getting those. Wonderful. Great. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted you to be aware of that. And so when you see activity out there, um, along with the new people that'll probably be in that apartment complex and other areas there, um, quite an activity out there. 
Um, just for your information too, um, with Clark Street being developed, we are looking at sidewalk along the um, south side of Clark Street. So in the future, this trail will be tied with sidewalk here uh, that links to the park. So you'll see this when the road right of way is developed here, you'll see sidewalk that comes out of this park and then ties in with Clark here. Any questions on the ship grant that I can help you with? No. Okay, moving on to new business, the parks master plan. Yeah, this was uh, um, our normal process is we try to pick a few uh, parks out that we discuss and update those, work on those during the two to three month window for improvements in the area. Um, we changed the format, as you guys are aware, last um, October, November. And so what we wanted you to do is read through the each of the parks that we have in here. I think there's three. Um, visit the park if you get a chance. Um, look at any of the um, definitions, the character of the park. We've kind of defined that, how it became a park, what it meant to us, um, mm -hmm. some of the development considerations. So if you have ideas about what you want to do there, um, Haley and Rochelle, we're really looking for your expertise. I mean, Scott was so happy to see you guys join the group uh, to get help us uh, with our master planning. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what we've done then also is on the front, uh, there is a back to a couple of them, is take a look at some of the major improvements there. Um, one of the things you'll see is that we identify what we want to do for improvements. We can certainly prioritize those um, in any manner you see fit. Funding has always been an issue um, since the uh, tornado of 1998 because we did shift some of our focus out of parks into the community center because we knew that was a smart growth option. And now that we have a little bit of that funding back since the community center is paid for, we're trying to uh, implement some of that into our master planning. It's probably been about five years since we've done a master plan that is online for your review. So if you get a chance, take a look at that. If you want a paper copy, let us know. It's pretty extensive. Ange can make a copy or we can get one run off, but it is available online. Uh, we'd love to have your feedback on each individual park. Um, they do need a lot of work. We continue to try to make options available um, and we have flexibility. So uh, we're at the will of the uh, Parks Advisory Board and we'd like to have some feedback. Well, I found, I found these summaries, and especially regarding future development, very helpful. Okay. Whoever did that Thank did you. a really good job. Mm -hmm. I agree. Great, that's great. Scott spent a lot of time looking at uh, some of that information and then just overall discussion. We may not have all of those amenities there. Doesn't mean that we're not trying to plan for it and get there, but uh, mm -hmm. I would really like to like your feedback on that. Well, next, next meeting, what we'll do is um, if you guys have any suggestions, please just email Angie and uh, we'll incorporate what we think you're talking about or give you a call or, or work with you from that point. And then we'll have additional discussion on these um, these issues going forward. And believe me, we can, we can change this pretty much at any time. We just want to have a document that people can pull up online and see what we're trying to accomplish at this facility. So should the focus be on the the parks that are included with this packet, or they can be on anything. They can be on anything. Um, really, what we try to do then is we'll take these three and implement them into our master plan. So to me, we have a revolving master plan. Um, we just keep revolving into the next uh, available park, 
And so when any, somebody walks in, and this is what happened, Rochelle, with us at Minnesota Square, is we had just worked on Minnesota Square. We had a plan going forward. And the Masons walked in the door and said, I got $50,000. So what I like to do is kind of have the vision painted here of where you guys want to take it. Because if somebody walks in and says, I got $12,000 and I want to do it at Warren Park, I'm pulling that document out and I'm looking at it and going 12,000. Looks like a half court basketball pad would be right that that uh, cost frame of what you want to do. We work um, significantly with all the associations. So whether it's basketball, soccer, baseball, pickleball, um, Lake Hallett's Association, anybody that has funding and ideas on how to make improvements, um, we're all for it um, because nobody knows better than the associations on what they have for needs at their facility. So um, that's really how we drive a lot of our improvements. Uh, Masons just happen to be one that really come through with a lot of money um, on different fundraising events, but we're, we're open from that point of view. Um, with, with that, um, Laura, what I will do is we'll set this in motion. And if you have questions and concerns, email us and, and talk with Angie and or drop a note here, whatever would work. Uh, feel free to write on these and um, scan it back to us. Whatever works for you guys, we just want to have some feedback. Sounds good. Thank you, Pete. Yep. Um, Moving on to reports. I have nothing for a chair's report today. <laughs> so moving down um, to be um, our updates from Joey. All right. Uh, so in your packet, you saw the January activity report in there. Um, January saw us return to in-person programming, um, which was which was a mix. You, uh, so we did return some in-person programming when allowed. All that programming that did return has a, has a COVID preparedness plan that either we administer or a group reserving the space is in charge of administering with our approval. Um, so far, our, our our users have done a wonderful job following um, following their these this protocol and you know asking questions and, and we've been trying to assist them as much as possible. So some of the highlights are. Um, in-person and virtual senior fitness, which is great. We've had we've had a, a nice mix of those individuals who are comfortable returning in person, but also giving them a virtual option, which is nice to see. Uh, pickleball's returned, and the whole process for doing pickleball is, is different. It's a reservation system now. It's not show up and play anymore, uh, again, with COVID preparedness plan in place. And then uh, one other highlight of on the activity report is for the first time we offered senior isolation kits and and these were we uh, secured a grant from the Mankato Clinic Foundation to, to pay for the supplies to go to these kids or these kits and they're, they're filled with a variety of materials uh, and useful products that uh, during COVID and and we know some of our seniors have have uh, really been isolated during during COVID and um, I can't I, I know at least uh, I can fill up two hands with how many calls we've had from seniors who've received these kits and and say how thankful they were and how much they enjoyed what was in those. Um, so today we've given away 85 of those, uh, and and we'll, we'll we're going to add another round with different supplies here coming up in the near future. But if you know anyone interested, um, they go out in our senior senior newsletter as well as uh, we have a weekly updates that go out, and that's that's normally how. Um, our individuals find out about those. Any questions anyone had on the activity report? All right, then jumping into outdoor ice rinks. So um, before this last week or so, we had about the, the most mild January we've had in a, in a long time. So for some reason, Scott and the guys could not make us great ice. I don't know why. Um, it was 40 every other day um, and then all of a sudden once we have skatable ice we go into this deep freeze that it, it's dangerously cold outside 
And as you remember, this is the year we are not operating a warming house at Veterans Park um, due to COVID precautions. The size of it just logistically just doesn't make sense for having people gather in. Um, so rinks are available at, at Rinks are available at Veterans Park for skating, um, and and we do we've had hockey practices out there and, and some pleasure skating going on. Uh, hopefully, we can keep them open for you know a couple weeks yet. We'll see how it goes. Usually, this time of year, once it warms up, it, it's pretty hard to keep those. Um, in addition to that, so the public works crews have helped us for the first time make Hallett's Pond skatable, which is which is actually a pretty nice. Uh, amenity. Uh, it's a little tricky to get down there during the cold temps and things like that without easy driving access. So you kind of have to plan for your time to go down there. Um, but we've, we've had a lot of good feedback from the skating down there uh, when we've had decent days to skate. Uh, and right now that's set up as a pleasure rink. No, no uh, uh, hockey nets or anything down there. Um, but um, a nice option for, for individuals in St. Peter. All right, so then jumping into the next one, uh, today was actually the first day summer employment is now available um, for a variety of public works positions, as well as uh, recreation um, and leisure services positions. So you'll see our, our, our pool staff and aquatic staff, rec summer staff, and, and we have a, a couple new options at public works in addition to our, um, our general park staff that come on for, for the summer. Um, Rec, rec department wise, we're looking to bring on about 55 or so seasonal staff this summer. Um, it, you know, about 30 to 35 at the pool and about 20 rec staff. So if any of you know any um, individuals ages 15 to uh, whatever who, who are responsible and wanna work with kids, have a good time and, uh, and, and do some great things, we'd, we'd love you to help promote, it, promote that for us. Uh, applications are accepted for about a month here until the middle of March. And then we'll go quickly transition into interviewing, hiring, training and all that and summer will be here. So excited about that. Summer programming, um, this will be uh, a, a lot of a return to how we've done things in the in the last summer with mixed in with COVID precautions. So the so last summer, everyone was unsure on how to do things. So it was a lot of virtual, uh, a lot of, um, small group, things like that. Now we know how to do things and, and what, preca or what precautions we need to take. Um, so you're gonna see uh, very similar to the amount of options out there for the community. And we're excited. We have a lot of uh, new options coming this way too. So you'll see uh, our summer brochure with community education again will come out in early April, uh, early to mid April. We pushed it back a couple weeks. so. Uh, allowed some extra time for planning. As we get closer to summer, MDH will start releasing some more guidelines and things like that. So um, look for the first opportunity to register mid-April and then um, and then things will start in May right away. So excited about summer. Staff has got a lot of things going. So um, any questions related to outdoor rinks or summer? Hey, Jilly, can we have uh, Hockey Day Minnesota down at Hallett's Pond now that we've got that figured out? I, I think so. I think we, you know, let, I don't, we might have to get some approvals. So I, I would expect us to have big crowds. So we might have to get some approvals from the landowners, but I think we could do that. Maybe Eli could help us out with that too. Well, I think uh, we can have, uh, Rochelle can probably get the MSU hockey team over here. No. You, you well, have some questions that way too, right? Davis. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds great. Uh, uh, last year, I'll just touch it. Excuse me. Yes. Yep. Brian had a question for you, Joey. Is, uh, are we on schedule to have the pool open on time this year? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, we will. Our goal is to have the pool open again, you know. And then what we'll do is uh, again we'll present a plan. Last year, uh, city council was was really involved in that. This year, we'll 
um, we'll bring it, everything to city council at a goal session just to, you know, just to see gauge their interest in, in being involved in that decision again. But I fully expect their pool to be open Memorial weekend this year, which is the last weekend in May. Um, you will see the return of family pool passes and our pool passes again. The thing yeah. that the thing that may change a little bit is there might be still a, a reservation system. So right now the Minnesota Department of Health has pools operating still at 25%. So to ensure we we can accommodate the amount of people that want to be there on a certain day, we might go to the reservation system again. Uh, last year that went great though um, with our reservation system. And I expect us to have a, a bunch of COVID protocols in place that were successful last summer as well. Outstanding. All right. Uh, then to just translate quickly into COVID-19 update, uh, you know, nothing real new since last week. We're continually getting information from the Minnesota Department of Health uh, as, as things change. The last update last week really didn't change anything for us. Um, you know, it extended some, everything's still at 25% for the community center and things like that. And like, uh, we're seeing good activity at the community center and safe activity as, as uh, I mentioned earlier. All right, unless anyone has questions, that's what I had for tonight. Thank you, Joey, that was wonderful. Moving on to see our department update. Um, for Community Spirit Park, as I mentioned earlier, the restrooms will be bid here on Thursday, so we'll have that information. We'll be working with the school board and their staff to make sure everything's a go. Uh, we hope to have by the end of March, everybody on board really in relation to those improvements. And so our overall goal is to have everything done uh, by August 15th uh, when the school activities start up. Uh, if you guys are aware, there'll be a restroom concession stand uh, adjacent to the, what I would call the east parking lot by the new high school. Uh, so when you walk into field three, uh, there'll be an area there for restrooms and activities that would go on between the south baseball field and field three, which they've been using for uh, varsity soccer. And so they really like that uh, that layout there. So we anticipate more activity happening in that area. Um, from the other end, when we go to the northwest corner there near the um, parking lot off of 361, you will see a uh, restroom facility built there without uh, concession stands, uh, mostly to encourage our youth soccer program and softball expansion at both of the fields on the west side. Uh, of the park there, plus trail goers and activities along that way. So uh, we're real excited about it. We hope everything comes within budget. Um, we've been pleasantly surprised with the last two projects that have been bid by the city so far uh, in relation to uh, overall cost. So uh, hopefully things go our way and we'll know that by the end of the week here. Uh, summer employment, Joey pretty much covered that. We partner with Joey on a lot of the uh, ads and how we uh, target. Uh, we do have uh, some exciting things coming up. We have a park ranger position coming up. That is a person that will be uh, uh, in charge of uh, communicating with our citizens who are using our park facilities and a lot of the activities that go on. Uh, overseeing back-to-back uh, -back rentals, overseeing how we just operate a lot of our facilities and helping us out helping customers that may use our facility. Um, COVID-19 update, as you guys are aware, Public Works has remained open and uh, uh, we don't have a lot of foot traffic through the door, so it isn't a lot different than, than being closed, to tell you the truth. We probably have a handful of people that come in, uh, but most things are done virtually by meetings now and or by phone. And so we get a lot of activities going on that way. Uh, we're hoping that things work positive. Um, we've been really uh, COVID free since the first week in January with our operations. And so we did have a few people that were in and out, uh, whether they were exposed or experienced some illness uh, from uh, roughly uh, mid-November to January. But since January, we have been uh, COVID free. So uh, our staff has learned the ropes, uh, learned to uh, take care of themselves 
and we're really happy about how things are progressing here. We have uh, no, no illnesses to report. So that's really great from our end. And then lastly, we have the Park and Recreation Advisory Board roster for you. I think it's on page 17, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you see anything on there that doesn't look right, let Angie know. Uh, we'll be adding our email so you can contact us. Um, we'll add Joey's and mine here at Public Works. Or if we add Angie, she really kind of runs the show and she can get that information to Joey or I. Um, and that's all I have, Laura. How about questions that we can answer for you? Any uh, information about parking along College Avenue? Mm -hmm. Parking along College Avenue? Sure. Okay. So you're you're talking, Mike. Um, mm -hmm. Let me get back to my map up here. You're talking about the improvement that we're showing. The angled parking, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, All right. yeah yep. we're, 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 um, we're positioning ourselves to do a street project on College Avenue, um, either in 22 or 23. And so our overall goal is, is that if we uh, get our funding in place for that project, we have MSA, Minnesota State Aid, um, funding, then we're going to implement that parking improvement without trying to get individual grant funds or use park funding for that. Good. So um, we're trying to do the best we can with uh, the available resources. Uh, we get an allocation every year and then we, we do street improvements in a variety of different places and this would be one of those that we'd like to implement. Sounds good. Any other questions, comments? I'm over your journey. Wonderful. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Aye. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed to same sign. Okay. Meeting is adjourned. All right, thank you very much. We'll be talking uh, to our new members here shortly. Okay, thank you. Bye, everybody. You thank you.